I think women of God or women, godly women, have always dressed in a certain way. Even if you go back in history, uh, you look at Jews and Christians. Jews and Christians also had a tradition of veiling and uh, of you know covering their bodies in a certain way. Uh, when we think of images of Mary, for example, Maryam alayhi salam, uh, we know that she she was a woman who would have covered, right? Um, in fact, there's even a saying of one of the Italian MPs when you know Europe was discussing banning of the veil, banning of uh, hijab. He said, how can I ban something that whenever I look at a, a picture of Mary, our mother Mary, she's wearing, you know? So I think women throughout history, women of God, godly women have always uh, dressed in a modest way. And that has varied based on time and place. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, revealed to us guidance that is going to last until the end of time. And that's for our own good. And one of the uh, guidelines that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed was guidelines for dress, not just for women, for men and women, but they're obviously different guidelines. So as a Muslim woman, when I'm in private, when we are in private, when we're with our husbands or with our families, we're very free to dress however we want. You know, or if we're, if we have women's only gatherings, parties, a, a typical Muslim woman will wear whatever the clothing of her culture is. But this is not for the public space. So what Islam does, and I think this is something that the West is starting to appreciate more, is that it values women's spaces. It values women's and men's spaces. That the space that we're in when we're in women's only or within the confines of our families is different to the public space. And so in order not to sexualize the public space, in order to take the sexual tension, if you like, out of the public space, instead of telling men that, look, a woman can dress however she wants, she can show her cleavage, she can wear a lot of makeup, she can do whatever she wants to try to attract you, and you have to not respond, right? Instead of being unrealistic, okay, in that way, what Islam says is, look, men and women, you have certain guidelines for dress and for behavior. So when we uh, observe the hijab, when we wear uh, our clothes as Muslim women, it's outside or it's in the presence of men who are not closely related to us. And what it does is two things that the Quran tells us it will do. Number one, the Quran says that, you know, you should dress in this way in order for to be recognized as believing women. You know, we want to be recognized as Muslim women, women who are not to be treated in a certain way, women who, who are not a plaything. So our clothing gives that message. At the same time, it also protects us so that uh, men who might have bad intentions. You know, we're not saying all men are predators, but some men are predators. Some men do get the wrong message uh, from the way women dress. And in order to protect us from that, uh, Allah in his infinite wisdom revealed to us guidelines for dress and behavior.